to multiply imaginary numbers. The goal of this tutorial is to be able to answer questions like the ones you see on the screen, i cubed times i to the fifth, or on the right here, the square root of negative 5 times the square root of negative 10. This tutorial can be found on our website, mathwarehouse.com slash i, <clears throat> or you'll find a bunch of other goodies, including a worksheet and a bunch of other practice problems. All right, before we jump into these problems, I just want to go over a little bit of the background knowledge that you need. This Doing what we're going to try today requires putting together many old lessons, but one in particular involving simplifying imaginary numbers I would like to uh, bring up. You may, be, you may remember from radicals that the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 can be rewritten as a square root of 45. Right? When you multiply radicals, the product of two radicals is equal to the radical of their products. Just a reminder that that is true when these numbers 9 and 5 are positive. For instance, the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 5, we cannot say that that equals the square root of 45, right? That is not true. Ne and I'm bringing that up because it's going to become an integral part of um, the lesson today. And what you, what you should do when you're multiplying imaginary numbers is n to not combine the radicands, right? You don't say 9 times 5 equals the square root of 9 times 5. Rather, your first step will always be to rewrite this as I'm showing you now. Take out the square root of negative 1. So you can do this. This is not a problem. This does not violate any rules. Um, but you cannot do what I showed you at first. You cannot do the product and take its square root if, uh, if the radicands are negative. Alright, so we might as well uh, wrap this problem up. You can <clears throat> simplify the square root of negative 1 to be i. The square root of 9 is 3. And we have another i in the square root of 5. Now we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 terms, and we're multiplying them. So remember, you can arrange multiplication any way you want. So we can say this is i times i times 3 times root 5. If you remember, i squared equals negative 1, right? So this is negative 3 root 5. Okay, so whenever you encounter problems like this, a square root of negative 5 times the square root of negative 10, remember step 1 is to first take out the square root of negative 1 and to rewrite the square root of negative 5 as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5. The square root of negative 10, we're going to rewrite as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 10. And of course, these guys become i, right? i root 5 times i root 10. And again, 1, 2, 3, we have four terms. And it's all multiplication, so we can rearrange this as i times i times root 5 times root 10. Remember, i times i is i squared. Square root of 5 times square root of 10 is the square root of 50. i squared is negative 1, so we now have negative square root of 50. Now, unlike the first example I showed you <coughs> here, um, here there was we could not simplify the square root of negative 5. However, we can simplify the square root of 50. So at the end here, we just have to double check. Can we simplify our final radical? And this goes back to an old lesson. The square root of 50 becomes square root of 25 times square root of 2. And of course, this square root of 25 is 5. So you end up with negative 5, negative 1 times 5, square root of 2. All right, so quick recap. <clears throat> when you are multiplying pure imaginary numbers, the ones that look like this, the square root of some negative number times the square root of some other negative number, 5 and 10 in this case, step 1 is to take out the square root of negative 1, right, to make it i root 5 times i root 10. Then we just have a multiplication expression here with four terms, and you can multiply the i's together to get i squared. You you can um, go back to an old lesson where you have to multiply radicals and you end up with some product. 
And the last step is to look to see if that final product that you got can be simplified. When the square root of 50 could. Let's try another problem like that. Let's multiply 2 square root of negative 51 times 4 root negative 3. Okay, so we're going to approach this the same way, even though we've got some coefficients out here. We're going to separate the negative 1 out. So you end up with this. And if you remember, these become i. So we've got 2i root 51 times 4i root 3. This is all multiplication, so we can group them. We can multiply 2i times 4i, and I'll, I'll use parentheses to clarify that. 2i times 4i, and then we can multiply our radicals. Square root of 51 times the square root of 3. So 2i times 4i is going to be 2 times 4, or 8, and i times i, or i squared square root of 51 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 153 but I'm gonna try to um, I'm gonna rewrite this in a way that will make how we're gonna simplify it easier to see the square root of 51 you might remember is the square root of 17 times the square root of 3 right that's what this is times the square root of 3 so now, when we simplify this, we just have 8 times i squared, which is negative 1, or this whole thing becomes negative 8. Root 3 times root 3 becomes 3, so you've got negative 8 times 3 root 17, or negative 8 times 3, negative 24 root 17. Alright, so now let's practice a few problems like this, when we have to multiply powers of i i cubed times i to the fifth. If you remember your rules for multiplying um, bases, common bases, i is the same base. For, for instance, if you remember that x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth, oh, let me write that the correct way, x to the fifth, you're going to remember that we do the same thing. We added the 2 and the 3 to get 5, and here we're going to add the 3 and the 5 to get 8. So now that we have i to the 8th, you have to remember an old lesson on how you simplify powers of i. Remember, to simplify a power of i, and I did a whole video tutorial on this, which if you, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you should first step back and watch that tutorial on simplifying powers of i. To simplify any power of i, you simply take that power, that exponent, divide it by 4, and all that you care about is the remainder, right? 4 times 2 is 8, and it gives you a remainder of 0. And i to the 8th will therefore be the same as i to the 0, or 1. So multiplying powers of i is very, very straightforward. You just follow an old rule of exponents by adding them, and then you simplify the power of i. Let's try another problem. Let's just try i to the 17th times i to the um, 6th. Right, this is going to become i to the 23rd, 17 plus 6. And then remember that how you, the way you simplify i to the 23rd is you just take 4 into it, and all that you're looking for is the remainder. i to the 23rd is the same as i to the 3rd, which is negative i. Remember, i to the 3rd, if you, if you forget that it's negative i, just remember i to the 3rd is i squared times i. i squared is negative 1. All right, well, what do you do if you have some coefficients in there? Like, let's say it was 3i to the 17th times 5i to the 6th. Well, we can think about each of these as individual terms, right? And you can group these. 3 times 5 is 15. And i to the 17th times i to the 6th. We'll simplify in a minute. So if you have coefficients, I would recommend just grouping them. 3 times 5 is 15. This is, just, this is just four terms. Term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4 that are being multiplied. So you can you know, group as you will. I group the 3 with the 5. 
and I got a 15, i to the 17th times i to the 6th is i to the 23rd, right? And we just got that that is equal to um, negative i. So this whole thing becomes negative 15i. Let's try another problem or two like that last one. Let's do 7i to the 12th times 5i to the 5th. Um, okay. Let's group our reals together, our real number, 7 times 5. And our imaginary terms, i to the 12th times i to the 5th. 7 times 5 is 35. This becomes i to the 17th, which, just remember, take 4 into it. All we care about is that remainder. i to the 17th is i to the 1st. So this answer is 35i. All right, that's it for multiplying imaginary numbers. If you would uh, like more practice and free worksheet with an answer key, come to mathwarehouse.com slash i.